Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. You know, when you hear the term AIDS, for some people, they think it is a death sentence, quite frankly, and that's the end, but not necessarily the case. No, Jerry Hughes is a, a Minnesota man who actually took uh, the diagnosis as a call to action is helping people across the globe uh, try to battle the disease and also prevent it. Take a look. Do you think that, hey, if you saw me in the street, you'd say, hey, Jerry has HIV? You would not, you would not know. Jerry Hughes was diagnosed with HIV in 2004. He grew up the son of a single parent in rural Iowa. He spent his youth searching for love and initially found it with credit cards. And within four years of college, I had $100,000 of credit card debt trying to buy love. Then Jerry lost his job. Overwhelmed by his bills, he turned to the streets. For a short period in my life, I made some really bad choices. His HIV diagnosis came at a time when his life seemed to be back on track. His whole perspective changed because he knew that now, you know, this kind of gave him a purpose and it really, um, and it changed him because he became stronger. You know, I think, I think when anybody gets diagnosed with something like this, they really look at their life and say, what's important to me? Who's important to me? And, um, you know, you make some changes in your life. He's been taking his story to Africa, India, and prisons and schools right here at home. Jerry started the Hughes Foundation in 2004. They fund an orphanage in Namibia and sponsor youth camps in India. But the most important part of Jerry's work is sharing his story. So by the end of that year, I decided I'm going to start the Hughes Foundation. I didn't know what to call it. I didn't even know how you form this thing. I just knew I had a passion. And I went to India. And I spoke and I met all these people who were living with HIV and AIDS. At that point in my life, I, I was like, wow, floored at all the devastation caused by one disease. It's very weird to say this, but it's affected me in such a positive way. When you help anybody, when you help people in life, you're, you're always blessed. And you're always um, given back tenfold what you think you've given. And so when I can speak into the life of a child or a youth or a woman, uh, it, it, my life is so rich and it's been a blessing not because of HIV but because of what I've been doing through the HIV. Jerry is actually planning another trip to Africa this fall and he joins us now to tell us his story. Thank Hello. you. Hello. Hello. Thanks Hello. for joining it's us today. It's good to be here. It's really good to be here. Love having you here. How are you feeling? I feel great. Good. I feel really, really good. That's one of the common questions that everybody always asks me. How are you feeling? You don't look like you have HIV. You don't act like you have HIV. And the truth is, is that's why I went public. Because the face of HIV doesn't have a stereotype or a look. This is the face of HIV. And a we lot of people are living with it now. They very are. Very happily yeah. Keyword lives. living. Keyword yeah. living. Yes. Right. But we saw there that you had hit rock bottom. You were deeply in debt. Yes. You had turned to the streets. Yes. How did it get so bad for you at one point? I really think that growing up as a child, my mom did the very best that she possibly could with the resources around her, and I love my mother dearly. But what happened, you know, not even know my, knowing my father growing up, it really created this void in my life. Uh, wanting love. We all long for love. We all want to be loved. And so when I left Iowa, when I came to Minnesota, I looked for love in all the wrong places. And that's when I found love in a credit card. I, I really tried to buy people's love. I wanted to look the look and just have the things I never was able to have as a child. Materialistic possessions. And that's what led me to $110,000 of credit card debt. Uh, and then when I lost my job, I had no money to pay it. And you do some really desperate and crazy things when you're really desperate and you're in need. And when I lost my job, you, you just you were searching, and that was when I made some really bad choices. Um, uh, uh, becoming a male prostitute, I, I, I just sold myself, and that was another way to fill that void of love. And and it wasn't truly who I was until I almost hit complete rock bottom by trying to kill myself. And it was at that point um, I just I I couldn't live with myself anymore. Um, but in 2004, when I was diagnosed with HIV, that was the turning point of my life. Uh, that was the point in my life that I said, you know what, I can't keep running. I have to love Jerry for who Jerry is and who Jerry isn't. Was that your immediate reaction, though, when you found out that You know, news? when I was diagnosed, I actually went over my lunch hour at work, and I did the 20-minute rapid HIV test, and I had no idea that I was going to come back out of that room you know, with HIV. It was, it was a very numb feeling. Very, I mean, you like, didn't finish the day at work. And I went back to work, and I just walked around like a zombie. Just, Unbelievable. Yeah. I have to say, if, if I was to be given a diagnosis like that, uh, you know, I don't know how I'd react. A lot, of, a big part of me thinks I'd probably go and bury my head under the covers, but you did not do that. And that's really what I've seen a lot of people uh, do. 
And when I was diagnosed with HIV, I'm like, there's 42 million people living with HIV worldwide. Where are they? And I wanted to know who are these people? What do they look like? And I couldn't find them. And so it was, by the end of that year, that's when I started the Hughes Foundation. And that's when I decided I'm not going to let these statistics make, stop me from living. And so I started living. And since then, I've gone, gone around the world. We had a chance to talk a little bit before the show. You said you have seen some very desperate situations in Africa and India. Yes, yeah. One of those being, I remember specifically last year, and this woman will radiate my mind for as long as I live. I went to a slum in India, and this woman was no more than 45, 50 pounds, all alone, and she was dying of AIDS. She'd contracted it through her husband who had since passed. Everybody in her family had left her, and she had nobody left, and I remember just touching her, and she began to cry because she connected with me through my touch. She couldn't understand what I was saying, but she knew that I loved her and I cared about her, and that was an image I will never forget in my life because she thought everyone had forgotten about her. And that's, those are the people that keep me going. And that's the difference that you're making. Exactly. That's the difference that, that you're finding. And that, that's the, the very fascinating part about it. What does it do for you to, to run into a person like that and make a difference and turn your own negative situation really, as you explained there too, into a right. positive in right. so many ways? I think whether you're living with HIV or not, people can identify with my story. We, it, it, stories need to be told in life. Whatever someone's going through, uh, you, you are lovable, you are beautiful, and, and you have a purpose in life. And that's really what my message is all about. When I go to these schools, I want these kids to know that no matter what you're going through, where you've been or where you're going, you have a purpose in your life. And you have a plan, you are smart, you are gifted. Use it and believe in yourself. Well, as we mentioned, you're going to Africa this fall, yes. planning another trip yes, out there. Yes, exactly. My third trip to Africa. That's How can people help you on your trip there? People can really help. One thing that we really need help in is funding. Uh, we're very small and we're very under the radar a lot of times, and we're kind of an organization that, that just gets missed a little bit, and we really could use uh, funding. I always say, uh, I met with Kenneth Cole in New York this past week, and I was like, can you be an investor of our foundation? You know, we really need <laughs> a corporation to come along our side and really invest in, in, in us because we have more opportunities than we can possibly uh, uh, deal with right now. Did he say yes? He said, let's get together S afterwards. Said maybe. Hey. He, wanted to see, he wanted to see the label on my pants. <laughs> yes. At least maybe he didn't say no. Was As you say, maybe he's better than no. <laughs> right, right. Sounds good. Jerry, real pleasure to meet you. Continue Thank you so much for having work. me. I appreciate it Good a lot. Good luck I this really fall. Do. Thank you. And good Thanks. health to you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.